Hello everyone! Last time on our journey, things ended quite poorly. The science were attacked by the Garleans, and all of our friends are either dead or kidnapped. And we had to take refuge in a church of the Saint Adama Landama. Thankfully, the Zions are not lost, as there are two Zions remaining, those being us, and the other one is a stuck-up teenage Elisen named Alfino Levier, the grandson of no other than Louis Wa Levier. Which is great, lovely. He met us at the church where he was actually searching for Sid, who was living there as he had amnesia and didn't remember anything. Alfino told us that even though the Zions are in a bad shape, the these Zions are still a fully functioning organization with just two members and we must show that we are still okay by killing a primal. Incidentally, the Ixels have summoned Garuda and she is stronger than ever. So to get to her, we require an airship. And that is where Sid comes in because Sid owns an airship known as the Enterprise. And with Alfino, Jogging his memory, Sid kinda remembers who he is, and we head off to Gridania to try to figure out where the Enterprise ended up after the Calamity. The last report the sighting of the ship was at Valgar's float, so we head over there, and they tell us the ship was seen during its final flight back at the Calamity. It was spotted soaring towards the border of Coerthas, and we are advised to head to the Observatorium in Dragon's Head as they keep records of all things happening in the sky, and most likely will be able to point us in the right direction of where our airship has gone. And as we're heading into the cold territory under the rule of the city-state of Iskar, let me give a brief explanation about this nation and the things we need to know for this questline. Iskar has remained a rather closed-off state ever since their founding. It is a city steeped in tradition and religion, Iskardian life is ruled by the teaching of the Holy See, which is their theocratic body of rule and worship, basically their church. They worship alone the Fury, the goddess of ice and war, which is quite fitting as the city has remained in war for many generations against the Travanian Horde. Now, the Travanian Horde is an alliance of dragons, comprising of various dragon kind species led by the great worm Nitok. And we will learn much more about them in the next expansion, but it's important to know those are the Dravanians they keep on talking about. Being a nation steeped in religion, there are also those who oppose it, and they are known as heretics. And those are all those who tend to side with the dragons, or simply not agree that they want to be in this war. Within the state of Iskar, being a heretic is an unforgivable crime, and for it the punishment is most often death. Now the nation itself is split into two main classes. The lower class, which is the regular people, but here we need to know the upper class, which is the four high houses, whose members make up most of the church of Iskard and their army, along with the houses shaping the city's culture, politics, army, and interaction with foreign nations. The four high houses are the following, House for Tent, whose main role is maintaining the city's military strength, House Durandir, which protects the nation from outside threats, including the Dravanian Horde. House Helenhart, which is more focused on industry and commerce. And finally, House de Samel, who tends to focus more on intellectual pursuit and act often as researcher, advisor, and diplomat. Though, of course, all of the high houses are in some way involved with defending the city state and its military. Make note all of the names I find incredibly hard to pronounce so the pronunciations might not be quite accurate, and if you're French, I apologize. That's the only thing I can do. But now, let's continue with our story. The first thing we can notice about Coerthas as we enter it is that it's covered in snow. Now, it wasn't always like this, but since the Calamity, the area has been locked in eternal winter. We enter Dragonhead, where we are given the advice to offer our services to the Iskartian High Houses. With House Durandir being the protector of the Observatorium, we try to offer our services to them. With the hope that being in their good graces, we get to examine the Observatorium's records from five years ago. Our first attempt at offering our help wasn't really successful, 
But we do end up getting a new jacket out of our effort, which is kind of nice. But eventually, one of the guards does have something we can do. There is a missing knight, and we simply have to go find him. So we head out, and we do find the knight being attacked by two heretics, so we help him and bring him back safely. So we are given permission to enter the observatorium and ask if we can see the record. We head in there and are faced with this questline's biggest challenge. The stupidly long staircase in this place. I cannot imagine having to work there. I would never leave. I would just go up the stair once and never come down again. Partially also because there is no handrailing and I am terribly afraid of heights. So I would just crawl up there probably on my hands and knees and I would live there for the rest of my life. We make our way upstairs and find Forlemort, who is the head of the observatorium. We plead our case and are given a firm no. On the basis we could be spies and those records are a matter of national security. While we are talking to him, another man shows up. This is Inquisitor Gilmain, who is gonna be a pain in our behind for the rest of this questline. The Inquisitors work directly with the church to weed out heretics. Their judgment is seen as flawless, making them very difficult people if they decide to oppose you, and Gilemane is not keen on us getting to see any of his Iscardian nose. And in fact, he advises us to not stick our nose into any Iscardian affairs, and we would happily not do that if we would just get to see the notes so we can go find our airship. But because he and the head of the observatorium decided to be really difficult, we are now gonna turn everything upside down in this place. It all starts with one person who will happily help us. This is astrologian Josea, who gets our attention and offers to assist. But only if we help her find her missing colleague. Apparently the colleague was last seen in an Ixal infested area where he was doing some research and we are simply to confirm his safety. We head out and find the man, making sure he is quite safe, and learn he really doesn't want to speak to us because we are not from Iskart and therefore we are unbelievers. Okay, rude. So we head up the many stairs once more and relay the good news to Josea. Now, she can't give us access to the records, but she does tell us how we can actually influence the high houses to assist us. You see, House Berendel will never grant us access to the records, but they are honor bound to give us a favor because now we have helped them two times by finding the knight and finding the missing astrologian. So they're simply obligated to pay us back. And what we should ask for is a letter of introduction to the other high houses. Taking the advice to heart, we approach Portelaine Durandere with the request but he does rightfully point out that we are asking for three letters of introduction and we've only done him two favors. So we have to do one more. We have to go investigate a robbery that happened in a nearby area. A merchant was attacked on the road and we are simply to investigate the scene, see if we can figure out what happened and bring back any merchandise we find. As we reach the area of the attack, we are in fact attacked by several heretics we quickly dispatch before investigating the boxes left behind. And in one of them we find a Dragonian Rosary, an item associated with heretic. It is in a box marked to one Francel Helenhardt, a member of one of the other high houses. So we bring the item back and explain what we found and ask for our letters of introduction. But because we brought back the Rosary, now suddenly things are going to become way more difficult. Because you see, Francel Helenhardt is a member of the Helenhardt High House. And now he's been suspected of being a heretic. And because every member of Isgard is duty bound to help weed out heretics, that now takes full priority and our letters of introduction are just brushed aside. Which is great. So we would basically be back at step one if it wasn't for one of the guards who asks us to come over. You see, he used to serve House Helenhardt in the past and he knows for sure that Franzel is no heretic. So he asks us to head to Skyfire Lock to warn the young man 
and to make sure Prancel knows that we can be trusted, we are to speak to him about Idlewise. A flower that was once common in Coerthas, but has not been seen since the Calamity. We head to Skyfire Lock where we find Francil, and he turns out to be a very sweet young man who wants to pay us back for bringing him this warning. So he writes us a letter of introduction to Horsifant of House for Tan, who might be able to help us with the whole airship business. Hoping this whole heretic stuff is over, we head up to Dragonhead, which is an old Discardian fortress under the protection of House of Ortem. The fortress actually draws its name from a Dragonhead-like rock formation nearby, though I can't really figure out like which rock formation is supposed to be. This is also the time where I realized that Sid and Alfino are just kind of standing outside during these quests and looking just woefully underdressed for it. Especially Alfino with all his peculiar cutouts on his clothing. The poor thing is just freezing as we are running in and out of houses to do these quest lines. It's actually a shame he doesn't come with us to meet Horsifan because the first thing the man does is give me some pants. And I think if Alfie would have come with us, he would probably have been given a coat immediately. But thankfully Horsifan is a lovely man who is willing to help us. He's gonna have his contacts within Iskard look around, but it's gonna take a moment. So in the meantime, he asked if we would be willing to help Lord Francel. Because apparently the young man was seen heading towards the Steel Vigil with three knights not too long ago, and we are asked to go and make sure they're all right. After all, the Steel Vigil is overrun by the Ravanians. Once upon a time, it was under the protection of House Halenhart, but was lost to the Horde. And has, and because of that, the High House lost much of his credibility. And when we find Lord Francel there, under attack by dragons, he does tell us the reason he wanted was to show he is no heretic. He was going to try to take it back with his three knights and no real combat experience himself. This boy might not be the brightest one out there, but we do manage to save him and his knife and send him back to safety. And as we return to Horsifant, he has good news and bad news. Good news, he has found someone who witnessed the last flight of the Enterprise and knows where it's located. Bad news, they won't talk to us because we were seen meeting with Francel and now we are suspected of being heretics as well. Yay! But to soften our disappointment, Horsifant gives us a new weapon, which we can use to get our rightful frustration out by killing some innocent and not so innocent critters. Now in our current situation, the only way to get our airship is to prove that Lord Francel is innocent and therefore in association we are innocent. So our first step is to take a look at these rosaries. As of late they have been found in shipping boxes being inspected by the Inquisitor and Knights. We believe someone has been changing the content of the boxes. Now, the likely suspects are the porters changing the content, or in my mind, maybe some corrupt knights or inquisitors. But as the people of Iskar see both the knights and inquisitors as these infallible, bordering on holy beings, there is no way we can just go and accuse them of that, so we go talk to the porters instead. And they don't take kindly to us implying they may have meddled with the shipments, and in fact, to prove they're innocent, we are asked to inspect the shipment ourselves. So in front of us, they put three containers, two for House Helenhard and one for House de Samel. Inspecting them, we find rosaries in both of the Helenhard parcels, which really confuses the porter. As the knight in white print front inspected the parcels before they headed out and found nothing strange, meaning they must be the ones who put the rosaries in there. We quickly bring this information back to Orsifan, who agrees wholeheartedly with us that there is something strange happening. We are told to speak with Inquisitor Brigi to inform them the trial of over Lord Francel must be put on hold for further investigation. But when we get there, we are told the trial is already starting at which drop, under the control of no other than Inquisitor Gillemain. And she doesn't seem to care that this is not right. 
and that Franzel is gonna die in the process of this trial. Because you see, the trials at Witch Drop, and most of the trials to figure out if you're a heretic, involve you dying no matter if you're a heretic or not. For example, the trial at Witch Drop is quite simple. There is a deep crevice. The accused must jump into it. Either they will fall to their death and be found innocent, or they will turn into a dragon and be shut down by the knights watching the trial. This is a terrible system. <laughs> And it really harkens back to the real-life witch trials of old, which also were kind of like this. The woman or man on trial would be put through things that would cause their death. For example, there was a trial of water where you were thrown into water, and if you sank and drowned, you were innocent. And if you floated, which I would do because I'm a very floaty person, um, you were killed for being a witch. Terrible system all around. Now we rushed to Horsifan to, to tell him that Lord Francel is about to die and we should do something immediately. He goes to gather his knight and we are sent ahead to stop the trial. But as we reach Gilmaine, he is not so keen on listening to us. In fact, his knights attack us for the crime of defying the Inquisitor. But as we fight them, there is one interesting thing we note about the knight. You see, each knight of Iskard wears a symbol on their shield, marking them as loyal to one of the four high houses. The knight we're fighting has no symbol on their shield at all. And as the fight progresses, a viver joins the fight, along with Orsifan and some of his knights, and eventually both the viver and the knight falls. And when the knight is killed, they drop a Dragonian rosary, making them, marking them as a heretic. We show the rosary to Inquisitor Gilemane, who is appalled that one of his own was corrupted. And with this new information, the trial is put on hold, and for now, Francel is free to go. And with it, we are free to go talk to the witness, who last saw the Enterprise. We are told the Enterprise ended up within the Stone Vigil, which is at the moment under the rule of House Durandair, as they are planning to get it back. So both Orsifan and Francel write us a letter of introduction, and we had to wipe them in front. This is one of Iskar's newer fortresses, as it was built with the purpose of housing the Temple Knight, who will take part in recapturing the Stone Vigil. And when arriving, we quickly meet Lord Rillemon of House Durandair, and all seems fine at first. He is interested in helping us, until Inquisitor Gilemain shows up. Talking about talking about how we are outsiders and giving firm orders that we are not to be let into the vigil. Which is just why? Why can you not let us go into the vigil? Do you not want us to kill the dragons? It feels just very not is guardian of the Inquisitor to stop people from going into the vigil to kill dragons, which are enemies of the state of Iskart. Frustrated, we head outside and speak to poor Alfino, who is by this point just freezing to death. And we decide it's time to earn people's trust in this place and maybe learn a bit more about this annoying Inquisitor. Though so we gather up some meat for the soldiers and Sid creates an alembic for the infirmary. Though the infirmary does not end up wanting to use it because the stupid Inquisitor shows up and talks shit about us, scaring the people making them think we are evil outsiders. Yay! So we decide to start learning everything we can about this man. We find out that since the Inquisitor originally arrived, before the time we entered Coerthas, he has found many heretics. And his arrival story is a little bit odd. So he arrived at night through the Eastern Gate. A guard who was watching saw him arrive through the blizzard, his silhouette lit up by the lights of Iskart in the background, and as the guard approached him, he fell over and got injured. So the Inquisitor heroically carried the guard back to Whitebrim, saving his life. There is just one problem with this account, as Alfino easily pointed out. No one really uses the Eastern Gate. Is not even near the main road. And when we go to explore it, 
looking from the eastern gate toward Iskar, that leads us just to a chasm. Meaning for the Inquisitor to have actually come from that direction, he must have either flown there or climbed out of the chasm. We start by exploring the area, and as we get down to the bottom of the chasm, we find no other than the body of the real Inquisitor Gilemain, covered in enough snow to indicate he has been here for a while. We bring this information to Alvino, who, re who rewards us with a wand and a shield, which is a really outdated weapon combo for a healer, but it's always nice to see it from time to time. We start speaking to the guards on duty that night. We start speaking to the guards on duty the night the Inquisitor arrived, and finally Brunilla, who was on watch that night, tells us the true story. Her fellow knight did not fall. He was in fact attacked by Dravanian, and as he ran out to face the Dragonian beast, he heard a voice. A voice talking about her family, how they could all die. And the only way to keep them safe is if she told no one on, of what they saw. She swore to keep her silent, and that is when the fake Inquisitor came forth. And since then, she hasn't said a thing, as he watched him point out innocent after innocent as heretic. Wanting to stop this, but too afraid to step forward, Prunilla started putting rosaries in the shipment boxes, in the hope that they would be found and the high houses would realize that it was a conspiracy afoot. That way, she could say nothing and keep her family safe. Though, of course, through this, many others have lost their lives. We ask her where the rosaries came from, and she says the Inquisitor actually has a hidden chest just south of the front, full of these things. So we go fetch the chest and bring it to Lord Rillemon, who is a very reasonable man, and actually takes the evidence, and both rewards us with new shoes, and gives us permit to enter the stone vigil, but does ask us to stay around for a bit and actually help capture the heretic Inquisitor first. And of course we agree to do that, because by this point I hate this man so much, that I am very excited to be able to actually stop him. The other reason is that at the moment he is actually judging yet another person. So we hurry over there and find him and a young woman who is facing yet another deadly trial. But we manage to stop it in time. We fight the Inquisitor, and as he summons in worms and even glamours himself as a dragon, it doesn't matter because he is a nomad for us and the knights of House Durandere. And with his final word, he rejoices over all the lives he managed to take and our impending doom as we will enter the vigil and be torn apart by the dragons within. And at last, this whole heretic business is sorted. So we gather up Sid and our Alfino Icicle and enter the vigil. We fight our way through numerous foes till we finally spot the Enterprise right next to a gigantic sleeping dragon. We end up watching the dragon while Alfino and Sid sneak aboard the airship to get it working. But as they work on that, we realize we aren't alone. La Brea has showed up, and he is being a right bastard as he wakes up the dragon, leading to our final boss fight in this questline. And as the dragon dies, it leaves behind a crystal, this being our fifth and second to last crystal we need. And like before, as we hold it, we zone out into that peculiar place where we store our crystals before waking up with Alfino looking at us kind of worried. He claims he doesn't care about us, of course. It just would be very inconvenient to find another champion right at this moment, but I think he cares a little bit. We go examine the Enterprise, and we find it fit for flying, but not quite fit for flying straight to Garuda, so we fly it back to the warmth of Gridania, where Sid can take his time to tinker with the ship and get it all up to snuff, while we can take a well-earned rest. And so ends this part of our journey. In the next one, we will fix our ship and go face the primal Garuda. But for now, thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed these videos, Make sure to like, subscribe, comment, all of this really helps other people find them as well, and it just makes me really happy. But for now, whatever you end up doing, 
I hope you have a lovely day.